sounding board. This is a weekly program completely produced, moderated, and directed by club members of Seroptimus International of Nevada. And we love doing it. It's really fun. Um, the mission of our organization, of our club, is to uh, improve the lives of women and girls, both locally and globally. With that in mind, we uh, attempt to structure the, the weekly programs, our sounding board programs, to um, address the mission. So today's uh, title is that of caregiving as a women's health issue. And uh, that old job of being the uh, caregiver comes back to us at many times during our lives. And that's what we're talking about today. We have with us two very special guests, Chris Chater, who is the Executive Director of Senior Access, and Mimi Schreiber. Welcome. Thank you. Mimi Thank is the you. Marketing Director of Senior Access. So first of all, before we go any further, what we want to know exactly, tell us, what is Senior Access? Carol, Senior Access is otherwise known as Marin's favorite social club for folks with memory loss. Uh -huh. It's a social club. It's similar to any other social club, like a garden club, a book club, the Olympic club. Um, you have to qualify to get in. You have to pay to come. We think of it as an elite club. And one of the qualifications for getting into Senior Access is you have to have memory loss. Aha. Uh -huh. So how do you assess someone's qualifications with memory loss? Well, usually people come to us because they've been referred to us by their physician or a neurologist, and the, the family has been noticing some sort of um, behavioral changes that have to do with their brain function, and so the doctors will refer uh, them to us. And then we have a professional on staff who does a formal intake and assessment process, and that's how they become enrolled in the program. Okay. Is there a big waiting list? We don't have a waiting list. Oh, really? Not yet, mm, not yet but no. we're, uh, we're about half full right now. Uh -huh. And we have a program in Terra Linda, San Rafael, and one in Belvedere also. Interesting. Mm -hmm. So um, Senior Access has been around the community for a long time, apparently. And how come I don't know about it, or how come I haven't heard about it? Mimi, help us out. Well, Senior Access has been in the community for close to 40 years. And we were one of the premier programs that started in the 70s as an adult day health center as a model of care to keep people in their homes even though they have cognitive decline and chronic illnesses. I think that people haven't heard about senior access because you only access, you're only looking for that service when you need it. Probably so, so when you need it, then you start to look on the web or mm -hmm. ask your friends, what can I do, where can I go, or, or ask your physician. Interesting. Okay. Well, tell us, what, what do members do all day long? What, what's a typical day for a club member? A typical day is, is pretty long for a club member. Uh, the day starts at 10 a.m. People are greeted individually, eye-to-eye -eye contact. They get eye contact and are asked or offered coffee, tea, or hot chocolate with some toast. And while that seems like a very simple thing, what it allows for is um, autonomy. People get to make their own decisions. Remember, people aren't making their own decisions anymore when they have Alzheimer's disease. Mm. Um, they get to make their own decisions. They get to have autonomy. They get to have social interaction between two people. So we start out with, uh, with that in the morning. Then there's current events, a group discussion. Then we might what have... What kind of things do you discuss on current events? Usually someone comes in with a newspaper, things really? straight out of the newspaper, what's going on in the world Good. today, keep people up to date. Then we might have an inter intergenerational activity. We are right across, this, uh, right across from a nursery school. The kids might come in. At Halloween they come in in costumes. Christmas they come in in Christmas Carol. Um, then we'll, we'll do some art, and we have some art here. You can oh. see some of the art that we do. Again, think eye-hand coordination, autonomy, decision-making. This all goes into creating pieces of Those of are really art. lovely. They're really, really like it. Now, what do, they, do they take those home and treasure them, or do they leave them on display, or what? Both. Uh, we offer art to take home for lasting memories and remembrances of, of loved ones. And we also keep some of, the, some of the, the exhibit quality pieces we do keep. And we have an exhibit right now at 10 North San Pedro Road. Really? At the Department of Health and Human Services. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Do you give um, awards for them too at 
No, but that's a good idea. We should do that. <laughs> a little blue ribbon, right. a red ribbon. <laughs> then there's lunch. We have a, nutrici a nutritious lunch that is catered by a, a local restaurant. And we do work with a lot of individual nutritional needs. Then after lunch, we have music. Often we'll have a concert. Bread and Roses comes. Uh, we have a regular Bread music. And Bread and Roses. You'll have to tell me what oh, that is. they offer music to the community, especially for people who can't access music themselves. Lovely. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have a musician who comes twice a week. We have people who volunteer. Then we might do another art project. Oh, we have exercise every day. Good. Every day people exercise either chair yoga or basketball, golf, bowling, tai chi. Tai chi. Now, basketball, do you have a gym? Oh, it's all chair. Oh, chair basketball. chair basketball, <laughs> chair bowling, all the Got people it. get up and, and bowl. Okay. And, we um, had a client in our program once who was oh. with a professional basketball team. Really? Mm -hmm. So did he, he give instruction? That, he did, and he got that started. He got everybody Good. involved mm -hmm. in the basketball game. Excellent, mm -hmm. excellent. We create our programs around who's in the club that day mm -hmm. and not have a standard program that people have to fit into. I see. Then by 3 o'clock, it's been a long day. People are picked up by their family members and time to go home. So the, the caregivers bring the person, the, mm -hmm. the, the member, the club member to mm -hmm. your uh, facility. You don't pick them up there. That's correct. Mm -hmm. okay. mm -hmm. So uh, what's the process for joining the club? Well, we, we touched on that in the beginning a little bit, Carol, but the process is that um, if somebody is diagnosed with cognitive impairment or memory loss, or one of the dementias, which we'll talk about later, they're referred to either the Alzheimer's Association and then they refer that person, that family member, to senior access. And so they have to have a formal diagnosis from their doctor. Then they call us and our program director, Jen, will walk through the process with the family and the family comes to the program. They get to see the building and the other club members who were there. And then they have to go through a formal application process and they fill out the paperwork and, and then the first day is free. They get to come and we watch them to see that it's appropriate for them and they get to test it out and see if they like it. And then if it all works out, they enroll in the program the next day. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty, it's simple. It's a lot of paperwork, but that's part of the licensing requirement from the state of California because we are, technically the clinical term is an adult day service provider. So the Department of Social Services requires that we have all the paperwork in place. So mm -hmm. once they get that completed, then they're in the program. Is there an adjustment period? I mean, are there some people who come and they don't want to be there? They think they don't like it? And, mm -hmm. and is there... Oh. That's a great question. And it's not so much the, the person with dementia actually usually has a really good time at the club. Mm -hmm. The person who struggles with the decision making and, and uh, bringing their loved one to the program is the family member. They're the ones who have to have They're the adjustment. They're the ones really? who go through the adjustment mm -hmm. period. Interesting. Where they struggle with, and we're talking about women's health and mm -hmm. caregiving being a women's health issue. And I think because we're women and we're used to, you know, we care give, we take care of our children and our partners and our husbands till death do us part. When our loved one gets sick, we want to care for that person. So we struggle with the idea of allowing someone else to do it. Right. So it's really mm -hmm. the family member who has the most difficulty. I like mm -hmm. the idea it's considered a club because I think that it would be the transition to going to a club mm -hmm. with my friends mm -hmm. would be a lot easier for people to say than, than I'm, well, I'm going to a daycare for people with, mm -hmm. you know, it's, that's kind people of hard do, they to say. And that's one of uh, Mimi's accomplishments is that she Changing the name. really mm -hmm. worked on the language that we use because Excellent. there's a lot of... Um, stigma and embarrassment associated with uh -huh. Alzheimer's disease yeah. and for club for, for our clients and families to say my husband's going to adult daycare doesn't sound as uh -huh. as fun or attractive as oh my husband's at the club yeah. so they have a, a whole new language they can use now what, why do people need something like this what's what's in it for them besides maybe just having making a new friend I think for the people who our, our club members, the socialization is key. Uh, staying, staying in touch, staying in contact, having contact with people. One of the things that people lose when they have Alzheimer's or cognitive decline is the ability to initiate action. Mm. So they can't initiate a conversation. They may want to, 
but they can't. Mm -hmm. We are always interacting with people. So I think for a club member, it's all about interaction, being with other people. For the caregivers, I think it's all about respite, getting a break, recharging, having time to run an errand, have lunch with the girls, just go home and sit, do anything you want, mm -hmm. or go to work. Many of our caregivers go to work. Interesting, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Do you have any stories that might sort of, uh, you know, lead along this line about how much they enjoy being at the club? Stories about the club members yes, who are in the club? Yeah, some well, club every, every day, I mean, we have a, a lot of stories. Every day is a different day because most people in our club can't remember what they did that day. But, um, but <laughs> do they, they have, remember you when they come? Do they, re do they know who you are? You know, they're, they, are, mm -hmm. they do become familiar with the, mm -hmm. with the surroundings and the staff mm -hmm. because they, even though they're, they're losing their, their ability to remember, they are comforted because they know the space somehow. Interesting. And we've had um, club members tell their family members, I want, when do I get to go to school or when do I get to go to the club? Interesting. And these are maybe people that haven't, have lost their ability to speak. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden they're saying, well, now I, I want to go tomorrow. I interrupted you. You were going to tell a story about somebody. Oh, no, I, I was going to tell another story about yeah. a family member, but it's not related to what you just asked. <laughs> <laughs> you can hear it. Okay, so what are the benefits of a daytime club? Tell us what's in it. You, you said some of it, respite for everyone, mm -hmm. but uh, socialization, what else goes on? Respite. Mm -hmm. Well, what else do as, we we get, <laughs> as we get older, our tendency is to become more isolated. Mm. And mm. especially if you, you lose your friends and, and your relatives. And if you're a, an older person living alone, the tendency is you, you don't eat as much. Maybe you watch more television, and you mm -hmm. just become more isolated. And that's not good for your health or your brain. Mm -hmm. So the benefit of having a social club like Senior Access is that it forces you to get out, to get up, get dressed, get out, mm -hmm. go interact with peers, people that have the same disease that you do. And then by the time you get home at the end of the day, you're actually tired mm -hmm. and you'll sleep through the night. Most people, when they come to program, they gain weight, they become mm. interactive, they just engage more in, in their activities. Now, earlier in our discussions, you mentioned something about sleep patterns. Mm -hmm. Explain that, how that changes by coming to the, to the club. Often people with cognitive decline will experience a change in their circadian rhythms where you'll, you may hear about this, where they're up all night pacing the house, pacing through the house. Nobody's getting any sleep. So the caregiver can't sleep. The person with dementia can't sleep. And um, by coming to the club, they're actually up and doing something all day. They're tired that night. Mm -hmm. So that can help switch back Got the it. circadian rhythms. Mm -hmm. We circadian. do, I mm -hmm. we do that word. Mm -hmm. hear that people sleep better when they come to the club. And then socialization, you talked about that, the, 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 making friends. They actually remember some of these people, that they remember their friends. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They, they do. We, to them. Right now we have a men's group that's um, forming. And they all know each other, and they, they like to read uh, very specific magazines, and they get together, and they, they sit at the same table. If we try to have someone sit at another table, they say, no, I want to go over there and sit with the guys. So Do they get cranky if somebody joins get, their table? They get cranky <laughs> if there's an interloper, <laughs> yes. yes. Oh, that's cute, that's cute. Oh, that's I remember my mother was just... Um, she took her cane and pa uh, pounded it down on the floor, and she said, I'm not leaving this house. I'm going to die in this house. Mm -hmm. You know, she just wanted to be there by mm -hmm. herself with her television, mm -hmm. with her, you know, by herself, eating almost nothing. Mm -hmm. That was so sad. Well, so we, we do want to step age in, in place. Mm -hmm. We mm -hmm. want to age in our own homes and our own communities. We want to stay at home, and we want to keep our loved ones at home. Mm -hmm. And one way to do that is by reaching out f to the community for community services, of which Senior Access is one. Mm -hmm. It's a very good, viable alternative. Mm -hmm. So how is your special? How do you sort of market your, your brand or whatever it is that is different from other senior centers? I think one thing that I mentioned earlier, and that is that we create our programming, our activities around who's going to be there that day. We always know who's going to be at the club. Do they like, we had a pilot. We have a pilot. Um, he loves. He model was a pilot. I hope he, he was, was a pilot. pilot. <laughs> he <laughs> was a pilot. Flying. He loves model airplanes. We uh -huh. bring in model airplanes, and somebody makes model airplanes, mm -hmm. and we t we have um, discussions about airplanes. We know who's going to be there, and we create a program around the the personalities and the interests in the room, as opposed to going to your senior center where there's tai chi and there's golf and there's. Um, 
movie watching and you go and you hook in to whatever, whatever activity is going on at that time. Got it. If it resonates, it does. If you meet new friends, you do. But um, we create the atmosphere for our members. Mm -hmm. You know, we haven't talked about cost at all. Does somebody want to talk about the cost? I don't know if we did that. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I think I mentioned it in the beginning. We, there is a fee for service. Mm -hmm. We are a nonprofit, so we do charge um, for people to attend program, but we don't charge what it would really cost us to mm -hmm. operate the program. Oh, okay. So it's $95 a day, and that may sound like a lot, but when you prorate it, it turns out to be about $17 an hour. Mm -hmm. Because it's a full day of programming that is nonstop, which includes, you know, a morning snack, um, lunch, and an afternoon snack. So if someone were to hire a home health care provider, for example, that starts at about $25 an hour. Wow. And you're not sure what you're getting. And you're also, it's not a social activity. That mm -hmm. person comes to the house and and your, your mom or father might be, you know, still sitting in front of the tube when you get home. Mm -hmm. So it really is one of the most affordable alternatives in Marin County. Good. And, and the, our clients are supervised by professionally trained staff who are trained in dementia care. Mm -hmm. So if somebody's sleeping all day, we, we make a note, we need to talk to the family and maybe address the medications that they're taking. Or if somebody comes in with bruises on their arms, we mm. want to say, mm, that doesn't look good. Or mm -hmm. So we are um, required by our licensing agency to monitor the health status of every single person in our program. And every single person has an individual plan of care. Good. And that's very different than uh, going to a senior center. You have to be independent. If you get there, great. If you, you know, participate in activities, great. But you're not being really supervised, mm -hmm. like senior access, where people that come to us are not independent and they have to be supervised. Now, did they have to come every single day? To the no, program? no. They mm -hmm. sign up. Where the Terra Linda program is open five days a week, and they have the option of coming once or twice or five days a week. So it's okay. really what yeah. the the family, what works for them in terms of the family's need Good. for respite. And what are the hours then? The program is 10 to 3, but we do have extended care. So if somebody wanted extended to care. Mm -hmm. come at 9, uh -huh. you know, to do their homework, work, right? to get their homework stay done. late right. if yes. they're working. I wanted to mention also that we have two scholarship programs Excellent. in place, okay. and one is need-based, and one is uh, based on the need for respite. Uh -huh. So we do have these two scholarship programs in place, and that's what we do our most of our fundraising for. Mm -hmm. For the scholarship so program, the, it's based on financial need as mm -hmm. well as how desperate you are in just the for need somebody for respite. to to that's give correct. you some help. Mm -hmm. That's that's Interesting. correct. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Very good. That's good to know. So, what is dementia? What are signs of memory loss? We always make the joke, you know, every time we forget about, we walk into a room and we forget why we walked into into the room, and we think, oh no, it's starting, it's starting. Is that it or not? I'm going to let Chris feel that. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, um, so two questions there. Yeah, One is, sure. <laughs> um, give you a handful. Dementia is the big umbrella in the sky. That's the disease, dementia. And underneath that umbrella, there are several different types of dementia. Alzheimer's being one, which is one of the most common. Uh, frontal temporal dementia. Lewy body dementia. Oh Stroke-related dementia. Mm. Now we're seeing dementia that's related to brain injuries mm -hmm. and some mm -hmm. of the football players. Oh, dear. So mm -hmm. dementia is just the big... Dementia is like wine. Mm -hmm. And then under the that category, you have different types of... Vari all the varietals. Type, all the varietals, <laughs> yes. Interesting. But Alzheimer's is, I think, the most common. So what are some of the cues that you should be looking for? Well, I think the one thing that most people um, understand is that you know, if you forget where you put your keys, that's normal. Mm -hmm. But if you forget what your keys are for, then you have a problem. Okay. And and a lot of the so that is serious. That's not just a joke. I've heard that. No, before, that's serious. That serious. serious. That's a very serious way of determining. Mm -hmm. Yes. It. Or or the inability to complete logical steps. So, for example, if you're tying your shoe and you can't tie, you can't finish it. Mm. Or if you're making a sandwich, we have a, a family member whose husband was making a sandwich and he couldn't get the top of the bread on the sandwich. Mm. He just stopped midstream. And that's a, that's a series and a logical sequence that, that he couldn't complete. So mm -hmm. that was a sign. 
I always think that the, uh, the older we get, the more our brain is just chuck full of stuff every day, you know, all processing information. And pretty soon, mm -hmm. you just can't, it has to leak out somewhere, and you sort mm -hmm. of start forgetting things. And I, so mm -hmm. I, that's my excuse, anyway, for just forgetting all the little things sometimes that I just forget. Mm -hmm. So that, is that pretty normal then, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I think sometimes we have too much to remember. Mm -hmm. I do, too. Mm -hmm. I do, too. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, tell us about, what is family caregiving? What is that all about? Do people identify themselves easily as well, we, caregivers? We want to take care of our family members at home. We're, that's, we're, we're hardwired for that. Mm -hmm. um, and it is interesting because caregivers don't self-identify. When my sister was taking care of my parents, um, I called her a caregiver at one point, and she was like, what, what do you mean? Mm. It's mommy and daddy. Mm -hmm. So we identify as, well, it's mom and dad, or it's my sister, it's my spouse, it's my partner. It's my responsibility. So we don't identify as caregiver. And I think as a result, sometimes we don't reach out for the, the services and the help that we need because we're not even identifying ourselves as needing help. Our mm -hmm. loved one needs help. Mm -hmm. uh, so a family caregiver is that the family member who cares for, it can be a neighbor, it can be a family member mm -hmm. who cares for their loved one in their home. Mm -hmm. And 70% of caregivers mm -hmm. are women. 70%. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And are most of them our own children when we get older? Are they our children? or uh, what's, Do you have any percentages on that? Well, that's pretty interesting because when I started at Senior Access four years ago, the bulk of our uh, members were spouse, spousal caregivers. Or spousal caregivers. Mm -hmm. And today we've gone over that edge into adult children caregivers. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Baby we boomers. Have more yeah, adult children to caregivers. I heard it referred to as the sandwich, the sandwich generation. generation we're caught yes. in between taking yes. care of two, mm -hmm. two extremes. We have many families mm -hmm. who take care of teenagers at home mm -hmm. and mom as well. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you had a story about somebody, the white coats. Oh <laughs> well, I was going to give an example of how how people come to us mm -hmm. and. Um, so a year ago, I received a call from a gentleman who was looking for resources for his wife and he wouldn't tell me exactly what was going on but he was quizzing me out about what is senior access what do you offer and and then he started to tell me his personal story about his wife who they had been married something like 40 or 50 years they had five children they mm. were both world traveled she had been a high school teacher in Marin for the longest time and 10 years prior she was diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease mm. and he'd been taking care of her for 10 years by wow. himself. And as he was telling me this story, he started to break down and he started to weep on the phone. And I'm on the phone and I'm talking to this grown man who's weeping. Oh. And I asked him, well, why didn't you seek help sooner? Because he yeah. was clearly beside himself. He didn't know yeah. what to do. And at this point he was crying and he said, I just, I don't want to tell anyone because I don't want the white coats to take her away. Oh dear. Which oh was dear. heartbreaking because there is that stigma related to the disease. People, uh -huh. they seek help too late, and, and it's unfortunate because they're afraid of being judged as yeah. crazy, which yeah. is just so sad. And it's hard to say to let go and give somebody else the, the, the permission to come in and take our loved yes. ones away. And that must, I can see why that's hard for the caregiver. But he did. So that was a year later, and he finally brought his wife to our program. And she is now, she's gained weight, she's engaged in activities, she's thriving, she's doing really well. And he's off getting respite and playing golf and doing what he needs to do. So it's a happy ending. Good. So if you were to give some advice on, uh, on healthy tips, just overall for a healthy lifestyle, what might it be? Three things. Exercise. Keep exercising. I think they're saying 30 minutes a day of strenuous exercise. Mm -hmm. Strenuous exercise. Eat healthy. I, I know everyone's touting the Mediterranean diet. Mm -hmm. But eat, eat healthy. Eat green leafy yeah. vegetables. Eat fruits. Eat, na eat, eat natural foods that aren't processed. Um, and the last thing would be socialization. socialization. Stay connected with friends, family, community. And if you do have dementia, senior access is a good way to add that socialization piece in. I would imagine, I'm going to make the assumption that exercise and a healthy diet comes along with that, comes with keeping your weight down too. Is that all yes. part of it? Yeah. yeah. And so. attend to any chronic illnesses you may have. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. So there are no surprises there then. No surprises at all. Not That's yet. what they keep telling us all the time. So if there were any thoughts that you'd like to leave with our viewing audience, each of you, think about it. What would it be that you would like to, to leave? Just some, I know that you said some things about don't be afraid, don't be afraid to reach out, but mm -hmm. expand on that just a little bit with our viewing audience. Well, to seek help earlier when you need it and not, not be afraid to ask questions, not be afraid to allow someone else to help you with the caregiving because, you know, if, as a caregiver, if you don't seek help, then your health becomes compromised and then you're not a caregiver and then you're not caring for yourself or your loved one. So, mm -hmm. so one, to seek help early and then also two, to, um, to watch out for your neighbor and we, you know, we spend a lot of time with neighborhood watches for, you know, burglars and things like that, but mm -hmm. to think about your neighbor and their well-being and their health and if your neighbor's not, you haven't seen your neighbor in a while or they're not getting their mail or they're not trimming their hedge, to not get upset that maybe your neighbor's in trouble mm -hmm. and maybe they need some help and to try to get in there and, and refer them to the resources that are available to them. That, that makes me think when I uh, was taking care of my mother, one of the best pieces of advice I got was be sure to take time to take care of yourself mm -hmm. because if, if you go downhill, then there's nobody there to take care of your mom. That's true. So mm -hmm. that was kind of goes along with what you're saying. Mm -hmm. So Mimi, what would your last thoughts be here? I think for... Uh, the best thing a caregiver can do, the best thing we can do today is get education. It mm. doesn't come, caregiving doesn't come with a manual. Mm. And we don't have all the answers and we don't know what to do necessarily. We offer caregiver educational workshops eight times a year. Other Eight, eight times eight a year? Eight times a year. Workshop. And they're mm -hmm. advertised how? In the newspaper, uh -huh. uh, by email, on our website. And your website, we didn't talk about that. What is your website? It's uh, sen senioraccess.org, org. www.senioraccess. Senioraccess, with no spaces, no hyphens, senioraccess.org. Excellent, mm -hmm. thank you. Mm -hmm. And so, so get, get education. Get education. Mm -hmm. Interesting, good. Mm -hmm. So what kinds of uh, uh, information comes across with the education? Just uh, We do all kinds of workshops, um, workshops about changing behaviors, how to deal with changing behaviors. Our last workshop was a caregiver college that was about hands-on care, how to bathe someone, how to do uh, what, what's hygiene all about. Mm. All of these things are going to start to change when people have Alzheimer's disease. I get, yeah. Um, transitions, self-care. Wow, it's amazing. You two are wonderful. <laughs> oh, do you yeah. interact with the people actually, or do you are you sort of an administrative level? Well, we are both uh, administration, but we, we designed our building where the program is in a way mm -hmm. that allows the program participants to feel at home, and, and they have the run of the building, and then you'll notice that the administrative offices are around the perimeter. Interesting. But yes, we interact with our clients. And they say hi to you. You have mm -hmm. your favorites. Mm -hmm. Daily, yeah. regularly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're fabulous. Mm -hmm. Thank you for being here. We just really Thank appreciate it. Thank you, it. Carol. This is wonderful. Hopefully you've added that education element to the viewing audience. Thank, so, you. thank you. Thank you, the viewing audience, for being with us and listening to all these issues about caregiving as a women's health issue. And thank you, Novato Public Access Television, for being here as part of our real Novato community. And thank you, Club Sisters, for helping out behind the scenes.